Hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Brood Sessions. And I am overly excited, although I have forgotten my popcorn, to, to have with me today Donatian um, from Keep Scotland Beautiful. I like that thought, Keep Scotland Beautiful. It's, it's the sense that it's already beautiful and we're just keeping it beautiful. And I like that. I like that. And, and, and John from Playful Communications, because all communication should be playful. I feel that should be part and parcel. It should be written into the terms and conditions. <laughs> but today we're going to be looking at something really exciting. And it's this project that you've run with the youth, the youth, I don't know if you spell that with an F, youth of today who have produced all these great videos around what this climate emergency means to them and what we can do about it. And, and I have to say, when I started seeing these videos, they were awesome. And you know, what you've managed to do with the youth has been, oh, it's great. And so we just had to share it at a virtual bridge session. So Donathian, over to you. Thanks. Can everybody see my slides? And can you hear me okay? I, I apologize in, in advance about the roadworks. I hope they not overshadowing the session too much. So um, today I want to talk to you about the Youth Climate Team project, which I had the pleasure to project coordinate uh, between uh, uh, September last year and April this year. So how did this project come about? The premise of this project is that young people were actively advocating for increased awareness about climate change, especially with the youth climate strikes in 2019 but this movement came to a, an abrupt end with the pandemic, or it became slowed down very much. So we thought that with this project, we would be able to empower young people to carry on this engagement about climate change through the medium of film. The Youth Climate Film Project was a collaboration between Keep Scotland Beautiful and Screen Scotland, with funding from the Scottish Government and the National Lottery. We based this project based on past experiences. So we took to Nature Scott, who organized a film competition on a similar theme, uh, Why Invest in Nature, and with Into Films, where we learned who held the very first film competition during lockdown. So we learned a lot from them. And from them, we learned that the focus uh, needed to be on mental health and the beneficial aspect of filmmaking in that regard. Uh, the budget was £37,000, mostly was spent on staff costs with a small but limited budget on incentives, film equipment and prizes. Our objective was to train 90 youth workers in basic mobile filmmaking skills, produce at least 40 youth climate films and start conversation with local decision makers. So how did this go? Um, so we divided the project in five stages. Um, so we were starting as early as August 2020, and that's where things started to be rocky because we originally found out for this to be delivered in person. So we had to adapt uh, a new training model so that it could be delivered online, uh, which had the advantage of bringing many more people together which from many more diverse backgrounds than we probably would have achieved originally. We delivered the project in extremely quickly uh, we trained um, everybody between October and November 2020. Um, and then filmmaking stage, which was the most challenging one, uh, had to be expanded to March 2021. And that's because of the impact of second lockdown, uh, which made it really difficult for young people to, to meet and, and film. Um, so that's why we had to kind of drag on this stage for a bit longer to allow um, as much film to be produced as possible. Uh, the local screenings uh, happened mostly in April 2021, and we had our final event, the Youth Time Team Awards, uh, also in, in April, and that was a, a huge success. Um, for this project to be successful, we, we listened to our participants from the, from the outset and made sure that they were key in designing the project to make sure that it would work to the right end. And we've done this at every single stage from the registration form to make sure that we understand what were the parts of the needs in terms of carbon literacy and filmmaking skills, what kind of support they needed. So we started on a good basis. Uh, between the, the, 
training, which John will talk a bit more about later, um, had also evaluations integrated in it, so we could continue improving it as we as we went with it. Um, we we run a film equipment grant scheme to support the production of the film because it's very well to know how to make films, but if you don't have the the equipment to do it, you can obviously that really impacts the quality of the film. So we didn't want them to feel um, hindered in any way. So that's why we, we support them with free film equipment. And uh, we collected lots of information on the film submission form, which allowed us to understand how the film came about, but also the, the history behind the, each of the films. And, and I think those personal stories that we heard in the Youth Climate Films Awards were, were really, um, really caught our, our imaginations. And, and we could see the huge impact that this had on young people's life, uh, sometimes offering a, a lifeline during, during the second lockdown. Um, incentives were really keen making this a success as well. Um, we offered certificates for those who completed our carbon literacy program, a proper board for those who completed the, um, as a token of appreciation, for those who completed the film training. Uh, as I mentioned, we had the equipment grant scheme and um, for the, to, uh, to reward the, the film that we produce, uh, we wanted to be as non-competitive as possible because it was really about celebrating everybody uh, and not picking winners and losers. So we awarded every single group who engaged with us with Sennheiser microphones, and we um, awarded a 600 pound voucher to uh, the six commended teams, which were particularly good. But again, no, no winners or losers, just, just celebrating as many films as we could. Um, the, we celebrated the films through multiple ways, avenues, because we couldn't have an one big person event. So instead, we had a social media takeover for a whole month. We kind of monopolized Keeps Community Post Social Media Challenge, uh, social media cha channels, but also Screen, screen Scotland and Take One Action. Um, the films were relayed really widely. We had uh, an award ceremony, which was attended by almost 100 people. And um, the films have a permanent home on the Take One Action film directory. I really recommend you to check out the Take One Action. They have loads and lots of good resources. Um, and local screenings were also hosted, uh, sometimes with local councillors and community members. Um, so in terms of achievements, um, we, uh, as I mentioned, we, we had 12 youth groups actively participating and producing films. Um, so we, sh we fell a bit short on our targets because we only produced 20 films, but that's a huge achievement because our early figure, we, we were worried in January, February, because the engagement was so low that we would only have five films. So, but because of the extra session and the extra work that we put in, uh, especially thanks to Take One Actions who held a session on inclusivity and how to make films accessible to, to everybody, that, that just regained and restored the, the excitement around this project. Um, and John made some really good online resources as well, like demonstration on how to how to how to do stop action films as well. And it just made the whole project much more ex exciting and engaging. So um, yeah, great thanks to him. And we also had another competition, the Young Reporter for the Environment, uh, which allowed us to reward three more uh, films, which you will see one of them afterwards. Um, and I think what speaks louder than work, words is the, the feedback that we received. Uh, we had participants suffering from, from depression at the time and being able to focus on one, on one goal like this, like producing a fantastic animation film that you'd see again after this, just allowed them to, to kind of go through, through it. Um, our, our participants were from uh, different ethnic backgrounds, um, my, minority groups, um, we had a lot of representation from the autism community, which was fantastic. And they produced some of the best films. Um, and I'm really glad that this, this work is, is going to continue. It doesn't stop here. Um, it's just been announced earlier uh, this week that uh, Film Access Scotland is going to host another competition called the Climate Challenge 1.5 Films. Um, you can find more about this on this website, which I'll put in the chat. Uh, when I'm done with this presentation. 
Um, so it's basically reproducing the Youth Climate Film Project, but to a national scale and with celebration even short after COP26. And it's going to involve uh, community groups, young people, um, all, all segments of the society. And it's really about giving um, the people a voice to express their concern about climate change and the appreciation about the environment and why they want to preserve it. Um, thank you. So, um, before we move on to uh, John's presentation, I'm going to quickly show one other thing. Um, Hi, I'm Mr. Muscle, and I live with my friends in the sea. Hello. Hello. What do you think about climate change? I think that climate change is horrible. It is changing our lives. I fear that if nothing is done, us mussels may die out completely and become extinct. How does climate change affect you? Well, pretty much all of my life, I am rooted to the spot. That means that when the tide goes out, I'm left on the beach. If the air is very warm, then well, I may boil in my shell like bacon. I don't like to talk about it. Another thing is that because of more acidy water, because of climate change, I find it much harder to create my bigger shell. That makes me very vulnerable to hungry predators. <laughs> what can humans do to stop climate change? There are millions of little things that humans can do to stop climate change. And that could be plant your own veg, buy local, lower the heating, get on your bike, Reduce your food waste, recycle, and so much more. Save the mussels! <laughs> so, Harvey is only 11, so that's one of the things. <laughs> uh, John, do you, do you want to share a little bit about the teaching <clears throat> So, I still haven't worked out how Harvey did some of the effects in that film. Um, he certainly didn't learn it all from me. So um, I suppose the just just I'm I'm happy for people to ask questions. Um, in terms of the teacher and the practical sort of side of that, um, we used uh, so there were two two educators. There was myself and Alistair Satchel, who's out on Mull. So the whole thing was done remotely. Um, it's a testament really to keep Scotland Beautiful's um, sort of determination for this project to continue because it was designed ahead of the uh, the lockdown. Um, it was aimed at COP26. Ironically, COP26 was cancelled. This project wasn't. We cracked on anyway. And so it all had to go online, obviously. Um, so we used uh, Google Classrooms to manage the groups. I actually used another set of Google Classrooms when I broke I broke my, we would have like maybe sort of 15 people per group. I had three groups and um, I would break those groups down into um, sort of smaller teams so that they could work collaboratively because one of the challenges was going to be if they have to continue working on these films through another lockdown, what are they, how are they going to share? So it was important that they learned and got over those hurdles before they then had to deal with it um, with their young people. So Google Classrooms was great for that. Um, if if you're interested, I can give you a quick sort of tour of a Google Classroom. It's it, There's nothing really exciting to see, but if, if it's something you're interested in, I can do that. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose that the key things with Google Classroom was that from a GDR point of view and with me as a contractor, I didn't have to manage any email addresses. Um, I 
gave them a link to sign up to the classroom and then all communication could be done through the platform i didn't need to to store their their email addresses on my machine um and then i would send out communications through google classroom i can set tasks within google classroom and i can track um who has submitted their evidence and who hasn't and obviously there's a space they with google drive there's a space for them to store uh, the videos as well so it, i think it, it on the I, I we didn't have many sort of hiccups with that mostly just um having the right kind of email address because if your organization is already hooked up to google classroom that can create issues but um yeah, it was a, it was a really great experience and and a good opportunity to sort of take something that I was doing on a fairly regular basis already and scale it up um, over a number of weeks and um, and I suppose the other difference was I was training people who weren't necessarily going to make the films. I was training people to train other people to make the films. So it was quite a daunting task from their point of view. Um, but really rewarding from ours because then I, I got to then work with some of these you know, youth groups and the film that you'll see shortly uh, was one of them. Um, I would turn up for, for an hour um, every couple of weeks and just give them some. And, and, and I suppose the key thing with that was the way that Keep Scotland Beautiful organises project, there was plenty of time built into it for me to do that. So I'm, I'm open for any questions um if anybody has any uh queries on the, the the teaching side of it anyway john can i just quickly ask what what were the skill levels of of both the youth workers who were going to go on to teach the young groups who were producing the films um and if you happen to know the the youth groups themselves i mean were these people with significant video editing making skills from the get-go they, they were all experienced filmmakers from hollywood <laughs> no they had no clue they had no clue some people didn't even know where the camera was on their phone <laughs> so it was completely new to them um i got the sense that some of them had been sent on the course um but you know, I think given the the with these kind of things where people are already really really busy, they're all public sector staff. Um, they've already got you know far too much to do, and now they're trying to do it in a pandemic. So it's like the the Ginger Rogers things that they're they're having to do the same as Fred Astaire, but in reverse and in high heels. It, it's it, you know it was just it was just. It was it was a particularly tricky time for them. So we did have some people drop out uh, for valid reasons, but we kept the majority, and you know we wouldn't have got those twenty three films. Um, and they they stuck with it, and and you know some people stuck with it a bit more than others, as you would expect. Some people produced more than one film, um, but. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was completely fresh to the majority. I think the benefit was that when they got back to their youth groups, some of the young people had, had already had a play. So the last film you saw, I think that young lad had already had a play at sort of time lapse, but he was just given a focus and, and a structure. And, and I think that was the thing that sort of then elevated their films. Um, Joy is put into the chat. She can't unmute today, but she's asked, um, what were the main challenges of delivering the training online? Because I know you deliver filmmaking classes face to face and over a day, but how how different is it to to teach online a subject like this? So um, I suppose I'd already spent six months trying to make what was a very practical face to face course equally as practical. Um, I'd already worked out that if you do a day course face to face, you can't do a day course online because it's just exhausting for everybody. So all of the sessions were, were between 90 minutes and two hours. Um, it was mostly sort of demonstration so that they would be, they could see my phone on screen. They would see what I was doing and they could follow along and then they would have a recording of that session which helps a lot because then it means I don't have to stop 
I mean, I would. I would answer questions, and if someone had a particular challenge, I would I would address it. But on the whole, you could go right through the class. So what was planned to be 90 minutes or what was planned to be two hours was 90 minutes and was two hours. Because, again, they had other meetings they needed to get to. Um, but they knew that if there was something they were stuck on, that in a day or so they would have a recording of the of the session and then they could go back and they could watch it as many times as they like until they got it. Some people did, some people didn't have to go back at all. Some people, I had somebody tell me they watched it six times, which, I, you know, I felt they needed like a special award. If we could sort of go out at 8 p.m. in the evening and just clap for that person because they'd watched 12 hours of me um, saying the same thing. But... Um, I suppose, yeah, I, I suppose some of those hurdles had already be over. Those were the challenges I found six months prior to that. And 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 it hasn't changed an awful lot since sort of October last year. I haven't come across anything uh, too radically different. But I think just keeping it as active as possible and practical as possible. What about teaching? I mean, there's a whole host of skills when it comes to filmmaking. Everything from the, the concept, the storyboard, the narrative shooting those scenes and looking at Harry's video in particular, all the editing that must have gone into that. I, I mean, how, how do you, do, are you constantly meeting with people? Are the, are the youth workers like meeting every other day to see how they're going along? What, what's involved? Yeah. So we had, typically we had five sessions, five, two hour sessions. Um, four of them were mostly taught. One of them was a catch up. So actually most of my catch-ups had about three people, three or four people, um, which meant the others had either disengaged or, or completely or they were fine. Um, but then there were a few in the middle who just needed just a little bit of um, support. And actually that was where the, so the ones who, who were fine, they just cracked on, got in with their youth groups. And like I say, probably to some degree were supported by their young people who were probably a little bit more up to date with the technology and what was possible. And so, like I said, having that structure and focus sort of elevated the videos. But then there were some groups, like I said, who I would join. And in those cases, the youth workers were taking a bit of a backseat and and then I would take that that sort of teaching role on for them. Um, uh, so I suppose it was different for every person. The, you just had those three levels of of people who couldn't do it or were struggling but would battle on. And then there were the ones who just got it and and ran with it. Okay, so sorry, we were running short of time, so. Let's see another another movie, and and the one question I want to squeeze in after we see that is just how do you how do you teach the confidence to do something like this? Because there are some absolutely wonderful films in there. But let's this let's see my one favorite. First. This is my favorite of all the films. This one's my favorite. <laughs> Planet Earth. 
so just very quickly, what I love about that was when when I first met with that group, believe it or not, they were stumped. And I had one bit of advice, which was you don't all have to do the whole film. You know, the, the way this can work really well is if you just collaborate and you have different ideas. And um, Emily, who is the main character in, in the film there, she had a storyboard for this idea. And she showed me the storyboard and it was all there. It was all She'd drawn it out and there wasn't anything. It was like... I. I I gave them the idea for putting the, the thing on the string because they hadn't worked out how they, how she was going to regurgitate all the clothing. Um, but the fella who was the waiter, he had a complete vision for how it could be shot. And so once, you know, literally within five minutes, it just all came together. And I saw them two weeks later and there was a rough version of that which didn't have all the words on screen, but it was, it was done. Um, and it was just amazing that it was just that one thing and it, it just all came together. They collaborated together. They got access to that space so they could film it, um, socially distanced and, and, and all of that and turned it around so quickly. Um, but yeah, it was brilliant, really good. And so what, okay, we're, we just have the last couple of minutes here just now. What, what would be your advice to other institutions or groups or organizations that were looking to maybe get local communities groups to produce films for for various causes could be students could be staff um could be the general public what what's your advice for getting started and 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 getting the final film out there i'll let don start <laughs> hand over the tough questions to don that's before is that one of the main learning of his project is that it's really important to have direct engagement between the tutor John and the young people themselves because we, we didn't realize what a huge ask it was to expect the young uh, the, the youth workers not only to learn how to make films but to learn how to teach how to make films online and some of them were not even engaging with their groups online yet because uh, different youth organizations responded in different ways to the pandemic uh, and some of them just hadn't got the grips on how to have a, a Zoom session yet. So um, especially um, we had to have more one-to-one -one sessions uh, for, for those uh, you, you focus who are not very familiar with technology. Uh, so be extremely adaptable and understanding of each individual situations and not be disheartened if a lot of people drop out or miss some of the session because Unfortunately, that's the reality we live in now. People are just have challenging priorities. So if you just focus your energy on those who are actually receptive to it and want to work with you, then you can do amazing things. Like we, we, we had no idea we would have these amazing 23 films. And uh, it's, a, it's a really amazing result. And they, each, each one of them is worth an award. So uh, we're, just, we're just so happy we got to celebrate each, each one of them. Uh, it is it's so powerful what you've produced john last word from you uh well well don said it um you know beyond that you could hire us because we've already done it um but yeah i think it is being flexible because when you know keep when i first came on board keep scotland beautiful already had a kind of a plan but and with and this was in collaboration with uh, screen scotland as well so they have a lot of experience in film education but they were open to um, Alistair and myself and the experience we'd had, especially with the pandemic and how we were going to take it online. That was something that hadn't been built into the plan. Um, so they were flexible and pretty much with each cohort that came along, we learned from the previous one and and then developed the, the next phase of the project. So while we could have easily had 40 odd people on screen all at once, providing time to break it up like that gave us the ability to learn and develop and nobody missed out because the first group had extra support when it came into the new year um so yeah it's um i you suppose know, they, they learned from our experience and we're open to that it's great it is great to see what's come of it and i i wouldn't underplay the kind of support and tonight in that you're that keeps scotland 
beautiful has supplied and and your skills john because um i know we were so impressed that we've we've hired you to produce a series of videos for the college sector that helps lecturers and students produce videos both for evidence and for teaching um and we'll release those all under an open license so anyone can use it um and it, it's it's genuinely inspiring to see what people can do so you know I need, i'm sure you've heard it before but thank you so much for doing that donatian and john and you know i really look forward to seeing what you do in the future unfortunately that's all we have time for that's for this enough. virtual bridge session <laughs> um but you know hopefully you'll have time to join us live for the next one but until then stay safe